Hello, Internet, and welcome to my live reaction for Samurai 8, Chapter 16. Uh, we last left our heroes, we left the really great material we've had since Atta came, and went right back to our old friend, the Princess Samurai dynamic. Uh, which is just as kind of bleh as it was before Atta showed up. Um, but either way, uh, Anne... Uh, Hachimaru and uh, Daruma are all headed out to explore the universe and try to stop Atta and everything. Uh, but when Atta showed up, you'll recall, he like blew a hole in the moon and now the moon is falling down. Uh, and that's where we leave off with chapter 16, Shattered Star. A moon is falling down, and a picture of the planet and the moon split in two and collapsing towards the planet. Um... And, we, and then we cut to right where we were, or we're somewhere else in the city, actually. Because it says, elsewhere in the city, uh, the people are watching the two halves of the moon start to fall. Hmm? Isn't it falling down? No way! That's the first thing you notice? Not the fact that it's split in two? Alright. It's too late to change its trajectory. You will have to destroy the satellite moon before it crashes. Any samurai who can fight, please proceed to the planetary orbit ASAP. I guess it's like the Council of Princesses or something. Um, though, what will this mean for the tides on this planet? Like, I mean, I guess they'll be able to evacuate if they destroy the moon, but will the planet be able to survive not having a moon? Uh, I'm skeptical on that. Anyway, shoot! And um, they all kind of like shoot their blast towards some rubble and it explodes. Uh, but it leaves tinier rocks all falling down, and there are now a lot of a lot of them. There are too many splinters, uh, and one crashes right near where um, Hachimaru and the gang are. Whoa, Master, it's literally falling on us! I've chosen this region for my hideout for a reason. Nothing lives in this desert. However, if the entire satellite crashes here, the whole planet is as good as finished. So we're flying out. Um, also, though, how long will would that take? You know, because with, uh, I mean, the biggest, the biggest, um, 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 I guess, corollary, the greatest connection with, like, actual, you know, history with this would be, like, the meteor that took out the dinosaurs, but what took out the dinosaurs was not the impact itself, but that it, like, blew up so much dust that it blocked the sunlight for weeks and the plant and the they like froze to death or couldn't get plants to eat or something and so the whole food chain collapsed but in a planet with space travel if that were to happen they could just evacuate for a while as long as they aren't in the direct path of the moon um i'm not sure though i'm not a scientist so don't hold me to that anyway the whole planet is good as finished so we're flying out uh, then the citizens notice this, like, line, I'm assuming that's Daruma's ship, uh, Daruma's key holder, I mean. It's a falling star! Oh, warrior god, please protect us. And yeah, the citizens all think there's, like, a shooting star. Uh, the samurai notice it, though, uh, and it's, of course, Daruma's key holder, the giant thing. It's Lord Daruma's key holder. They'll try to shatter the satellite. Tagamichi's, uh, come back. Stand back or you risk becoming collateral damage. What?! You mean THE Lord Daruma? Did you get him to come to our aid? Uh, and Daruma is going in, like, blowing up bits of the moon. Uh, it stopped! Uh, also, the key holder has now, like, gone on the roof, and it looks more like the control room of the spaceship. Um, so according to Hachimaru, the falling moon halves aren't falling, but we can see the, like, the flame heating up as they, like, enter the atmosphere, though. So, I'm skeptical about what Hachimaru is saying there. Hachimaru, where are you? Come here quickly. We're in a hurry right now. And, uh, Daruma is, like, walking away. Hachimaru looks up, looks at him. Oh, right. And Daruma turns back. And, well, what do you need? Please share your power with Hachimaru. A princess's prayer makes a samurai stronger. Uh, Hachimaru looks at him confusedly. Y you're right. Princess Woon used to t tell me the same thing. We'll show we'll show you Samurai Hachimaru's mightiness. I'll p pray for a lot of power. And we see here what really is my complaint with the Princess Samurai dynamic. Um, in that it leads to, you know, the Samurai, who are either mostly or all men, going out and fighting battles, while the princesses, who are by definition women, praying for their strength. 
And, you know, Kishimoto got a lot of flack back in Naruto for the female characters always taking a bit of, like, a very much backseat to the action. Uh, but even there, there was, like, the hope that, you know, his female cast could, like, would do things. And they did things enough to keep you hopeful for more. You know, Sakura versus Sasori, uh, Hinata's last stand against Pain... I'm um, drawing a blank on any others in the original manga, but that's kind of the point. Um, whereas here, Kishimoto isn't even giving us that hope. Oh, you know, all the princesses just stay behind and pray for their strength. It's everything I have wrong with this series, wrapped up in, like, four pan five panels. Um, anyway, do your best, Hachimaru. I barely understood your conversation, but here I go. I do like Hachimaru, though. Hachimaru is a sweet kid. Uh, and the hatch at the top of the key holder opens. Um, oh, I guess Samurai can breathe in space. Yeah, I knew that. Because uh, they have the, the robot bodies and everything. Because Atta did that. Or, though, even... That was, like, a clone of Atta, so maybe that doesn't count the same way. But it seems like it does. Anyway, I'm rambling on. Um, so Hachimaru and uh, Daruma look at the two gigantic halves of the moon. It's enormous. Hashimaru, like, kind of is, like, shaking. Uh, but Anne prays. And we have this vision of her in front of, like, a ball of light. And she puts her hands against it, and the ball grows. I feel stronger, sort of? It is because of Anne. So, yeah, that's, I guess, um, a visualization of um, Anne's prayer. I'm not sure if that's, like, mentally happening like some part of Anne's consciousness sees the ball and is actually doing that or is it meant to be a metaphor I don't know anyway um Daruma's head like clicks open his spine pops out Hachimaru extract your key uh Hachimaru does the same okay now prepare to repeat my moves as if you were tracing them I would rather do it properly and upload the Vajrayaksa license to your key but we do not have enough time um and the the two keys connect Got it. Vajrayaksa style. Atmospheric blade. Uh, and Daruma gets this, these kind of like balls on his sword. Uh, we see the same thing kind of happening to Hachimaru. This is one of my most powerful techniques. And is uh, so, so the move goes straight to Hachimaru through the connections, I think. And this like dragon thing appears over Hachimaru's sword. Huh? But I do not have enough power in this cat's body to do it alone. I need your help to shatter the star. Ah! No way. We're going to shatter the whole thing? That giant split planet? That's too much. It's not a planet. It's a moon. Hashimaru, you have a samurai's body, Hayataro's bone hilt, and a princess's divine blessing. Stand tall and brave. You've already attained the trinity. Uh, and Hashimaru looks at him. Do you want to protect that planet below? Uh, and Hashimaru looks back at the moon. Please. Uh, Hagamichi is back with his princess, Lord Daruma, and Hachimaru. Uh, and, like, a group of princesses are all, like, talking about it together. I heard Anna's on that thing, together with her fated samurai. They're going to stop Moon from falling? What? Our Anne? Yep, I knew that Hachimaru guy was the real deal. I should have asked him to sign something. Oh, we're back with, uh, Nanashi's dojo. Is this really the time to be talking about that? Uh, Nanashi looks up. Hachimaru? I'm glad to see Nanashi again. Nanashi is kind of my hope for this series and his wonky gender politics. Um, though also a loaded landmine, but I'm not sure how Kishimoto is going to handle them. But that's a debate for Chapter 3. Go back and watch that video. Um, anyway, the moon is still falling uh, as everyone is on the planet is watching it. Um, and we, we see a shot of uh, Furuta's grave. On this planet, I met, met Master and became a samurai. I made friends. I met Anne. And above all, it's the planet I lived on with Dad. And the place where I made a promise to him. This planet is my home. Let us start. Onward! And Hachimaru opens his eyes. Uh, and the dragon, like, rushes from his sword. And, like, enlarges enough that it can swallow the entire moon. Um, and... Hold on. What is going on in, on page 15 here? It looks like there's this, from the planet, there is this swirl thing coming up, and it 
eventually coalesces into a line that has like a hooked point. I can't find the moon or Hachimaru and the gang anywhere here. Uh, but then it quickly fades away. Oh, okay. So we see down here, uh, Hagamichi, the atmospheric blade. Did it really shatter the satellite? Just like in the legends. So what I'm guessing happened is the somehow, what was originally a dragon eating the moon then became this like hook thing. And somewhere in here in the hook thing is where, um, I realize you, I'm pointing at the hook thing and you can't see that because you can't see my screen. Uh, but somewhere in here is where Hayataro and the gang and, um, the moon is. Hi Hayataro and the, you know what? Hayataro and the gang. Hayataro is the best character in this series. <laughs> Hayataro and the gang, uh, and the moon are all in this little blade point, I guess. Um, so, the, so that's what Hagamichi says, did it really shadow the satellite? Just like in the legends. And yeah, the moon is gone. It disappeared! Yeah! Again, this is gonna wreck your tides. We're saved! We're safe now! Uh, and Nanashi thinks to himself, I knew you were amazing, Hachimaru. I don't doubt you'll really become the next falling star. Uh, and the princesses are, we cut back to the princesses. I've always said and had a good eye for flower arrangements. I don't know what that has to do with anything right now. I actually knew about that boy. Really? Tell me, what kind of a person is your samurai? How did the princess know about Hachimaru? Or is she just lying to, like, get get credit or whatever, clout, whatever it's called. Anyway, we cut to Anne looking all excited as uh, the three of them come back down the platform. It w was amazing! Ha Hachimaru? And she looks confused. And Hachimaru is like a fucking skeleton. His, like, cheeks have completely sunk in. Erm, erm, erm. Um, huh? Huh? We'll show you Samurai Hashimaru's mightiness. I'm still the same scrawny weakling I've always been. She flashes back to those two lines. I, I'll i cook you a, lo a lot of tasty dishes. Huh? Your body will return to its usual form once you have rested. Now, since we flew out to space, I don't see any reason to return. Look at your home to your heart's content while you have the chance. We still have six more keys to find. So... Let us go on our next adventure. Onwards to a new arc. Chapter 16, end. So yeah, this is officially the end of its pretty long introductory arc. Um, a lot happened. Hashimaru got a token um, tragic backstory. Fairly later into the arc. I've been comparing this series a lot with Eden Zero, and I think that's a fair comparison for, for several reasons. Um, but in that series... You know, Shiki got his tragic backstory by the end of episode one, chapter one. It's a great backstory. It's a fantastic chapter. Um, well, as whereas here, Hashimaru like has a kind of tragic backstory b before the series starts. Um, but it's I'm trying to find the right way to describe it because it's not the same kind of crippling loneliness of like Naruto. You know, he had a dad and he had a. Um, a not super unusual father-son relationship with him, you know? Um, they fought, but, like, that's what fathers and sons do. Um, um, but he did get one by the end, with learning about his past and how Furita, you know, upended his life to protect him and then died for him. Um, and in the end, I'm hopeful for the series. I'm thinking about, like, my thoughts on the series as a whole, and I've already laid out my biggest complaints, uh, which is, you know, the samurai princess dynamic is not what I'm fond of. Um, I think it does a lot to, I guess, prescribe a more passive role to its female characters, which is less than stellar, let's say. Um... Uh, without even really much of a hope for improvement. Like I brought up Naruto earlier, there was always the hope that, you know, th there are enough moments like, oh, hey, there's a good moment uh, for the female cast. But like here, she's already, you know, Anne is dedicated to praying and cooking tasty meals, which you can do better, Kishimoto. Um, and I feel like I'm going to get a lot of hate for my complaints on this, but you know what? They're my complaints. This is my channel. I have that right. 
Um, though I, I am glad we get Nanashi back. I don't know when they're going to actually become an important character again, because here, you know, they're not a part of the Hayataro crew. That's their permanent name now, by the way. Um, so, of course, they're not on the ship with Hashimaru. Um, but I do hope they leave their dojo sooner rather than later and become at least a recurring character. Um, you know, kind of like, I'm trying to think of, um, uh, I'm not, I, what I'm aware of is Law's role in One Piece. I'm still on Fishman Island, so Law has, hasn't showed up a whole lot yet, but I'm told he kind of, like, comes in every arc or, and like, every couple of arcs and, like, like, is an ally, but never really a main member of the crew, or a member of the crew at all. But again, not far enough to really have an opinion on law. But that kind of thing is what I what I picture Nanashi doing. You know, they're never really a member of the Hayataro crew. Um, but, like, they're all allies. They help each other out when they're around. But they have their own life uh, that we don't get to see as often. Because they're not Hachimaru. Um, that's pretty much my ideal role for Nanashi. Um, beyond that... I, so beyond the Princess Samurai dynamic, and I really dig a lot of this series. The artists started to get, get cleaned up. I brought up a lot of complaints in the earlier chapters that there's so much going on, and that so much of the powers of samurai are really unknown, that I just don't know what's going on in some of the fight scenes. You know, he can, like, there was a point where he, where Hachimaru, like, put something extending from his elbow, and, like, I have no idea what that's about. Um, so yeah, I have hope for the series. I'm hoping that, you know, because there, there are moments in Anne's introductory stuff, uh, like her first few chapters before she meets Hachimaru, that has her more of a strong-willed character than this kind of passive role the Samur the princess samurai dynamic seems to dictate that she's in. And my, my dream is that that's explored and Anne becomes a very active character. Um, sure, like, the, the central drama all revolves around Hachimaru, um... But Anne, I, I want to see Anne do more than be, like, a support class who, you know, prays for Hachimaru's strength and cooks some nice meals when he's done because, ugh, that's very rigid 1950s gender roles. <laughs> and that, 1950s were 70 years ago, it's time to move on. Um, but yeah, this, what, what, I was, what I was saying before I got distracted by Anne again, for some reason my ADD meds have not been on their best work the past couple of days, so I'm very rambly today. Um, anyway, um, what I was trying to get at is that the stuff with Atta and Furuta and all of that drama, that was really good. I was living for those chapters. Um, Atta's arrival was a huge step up in the series that was, had, was being bogged down with the tepid quasi-romance between Hachimaru and Anne and, again, the princess samurai dynamic. Uh, and that brought in a level of threat that I'm excited to see continue. Um, I don't quite know how that will all happen. Um, I can't imagine it's going to be clashing with Atta every arc, and Atta always gets away in the last second. So there are probably other members of the Uchuzma school who will get involved. And there's still plenty of, like, things below the surface there, like why the founder of the Uchuzma school is destroying planets that I hope is explored. Um... So yeah, I'm looking for the next arc with a bit of trepidation, uh, but hope that it can expand on what worked in the first arc and not focus so much on what didn't work. Um, I've accepted the Princess Samurai dynamic is going to be around. Uh, I don't have to like it, but it will be around. Um, but I'm hoping it can get better from here. So I'm sorry it's turned into a very more retrospective of the entire first arc than just the chapter itself, but I feel like it's a good time to talk about that. Uh, but this video did end up being very long as a result, so I'm going to leave this video off here. Hope you all enjoyed the chapter and the video itself. If you did, feel free to drop me a like, or subscribe, or do whatever makes you happy, you know? And remember, your life is your own, okay? Bye!